In this video, I'm going to try to make a Scratch game without using the mouse. Wait, Scratch is a programming language where you drag blocks in the scripts to make the project. You're probably thinking that you can't do any of that without a mouse. And you're right. You see, doing this in native Scratch would be virtually impossible. Yeah, nothing's happening. However, we do have one thing on our side, a Scratch mod known as Tosh. Tosh is a text-based editor in Scratch, and it basically allows us to type all of our code instead of dragging it block by block. Although those of you who are sad that I'm not using native Scratch for this challenge, my goal is to eventually import it and then share it on Scratch as well. But does this solve all of our problems? Absolutely not. There are still tons of buttons to click on but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's discuss the rules of the challenge. The rules are for this challenge, one, you're not allowed to use a mouse. In other words, you can only use the keyboard. Two, you're not allowed to use anything that would emulate a mouse, although keyboard shortcuts are okay. And three, you're not allowed to use browser extensions just to keep things interesting. With the rules out of the way, it's time to begin the challenge. Let's get Tosh open. And now that we're here, let's remove the mouse so let's experiment with our first script in Tosh. Within the Tosh editor, we can type in when. As you can see, it automatically suggests flag clicked for us. So let's press tab. And then let's try adding another block. Next, we just need to click on the I mean orange flag. And yeah, we don't have a mouse to click on it. This is where the first obstacle comes in. Tosh is quite helpful in this situation. If you read the Tosh manual, you'll see that we can press Control return to run the project and escape to return back to the code. So thanks Tosh. Now we can run our code without a mouse. So now we can go back to work, almost. You see, when you create a Scratch project, you usually delete the cat, make a new sprite, maybe paint a sample costume, and then start coding. Man, do I take all of that for granted. Because without a mouse, you can't delete the first sprite, or make a new sprite, or add costumes or sounds. This means that we are constrained to the first sprite with only its single costume. Can we even make a Scratch game with only that? Well, we can. I'd like to introduce you to 100% pen projects. A 100% pen project is where everything drawn on the screen uses the pen tool. Costumes don't matter and all you need is one sprite. Since we can do this without using a mouse, this is exactly what we need. This leads into what game we will be making as well. I remember a retro football handheld game that I saw in the toy stores as a kid, where you basically try to get to the end zone without being tackled. This is the perfect game to develop with the pen, so I decided to start coding the project. Anyway, here's a 15 second time lapse of the field being drawn. Ah, uh, there's the one hour mark. I decided that I would code an hour every day, meaning that I would have to save my project with Control S. You'll notice that the file isn't SB3, but SB2. Yep. This isn't the Scratch 3 file, this is a Scratch 2 file. This shouldn't be a problem though, since Scratch 3 can open up SP2 files just fine. Anyway, let's wait until the next day, and then I can get back in the business by opening the project with Control O. Here we go. Oh wait. Or so I thought. You see, Tosh doesn't seem to understand the shortcut Control O, so instead of Tosh opening the file, my browser opens it instead. If, for example, I opened up a file that my browser can read, then it would load the file and display it in a new tab. But since browsers don't understand what an SP2 file is, they instead ask you where to save the file like you were downloading it. This is why my browser was asking me if I wanted to leave the page, and you can tell if you look at the address bar. So if we can't use Control O, then our next best bet is to use Tab and Shift Tab, which allows us to navigate each link in a website. But this is another dead end. You see, when you launch Tosh, it automatically places your cursor in the script editor, disabling the tab functionality. It doesn't work when running the program either. So that means our last option is to copy all the code from the video man- <gasps> No way. Okay, no way, I think it this might have worked. Well, this is interesting. So apparently somehow I managed to click on the open button, even though I was completely unsure of what I just did. Somehow by switching to a different app and back, placed my selection in the browser, and pressing either tab or escape placed me on the Tosh link here, which I know because of the link indicator here. I then pressed tab one more time, and now I can open the project by pressing enter. Of course, since I wasn't completely sure how I did it, I made sure to save the project in a text file as well. In case you're wondering, I can only access the buttons on the top row of this method, meaning that other buttons on this page were still inaccessible. But for now, 
let's go back to coding. Here, I finished drawing the field. Then I started working on drawing the players. With the main drawing part done, I decided to work on moving the player. And here we go again with another complication, perhaps the biggest one of all, variables. Many, if not all, Scratch projects use variables at some point in time. Since we are using the pen tool, we have to manually keep track of the player's positions, making variables an absolute necessity. The problem is that the only way to make variables in Tosh is to click the button in the top left corner. And yeah, we don't have a mouse. But as always, there is one small glimmer of hope. While we can't make variables in Tosh, we can utilize pre-made variables that we can set and get the value from. In this project, I'll use the volume variable to store the main data, and some other variables to store other pieces of data we'll need. Next, we need to create some way to manage all the data. Some good news, this project only requires us to store numbers. I thought about merging all the numbers together, and then we just create a my block to get or store one or two numbers, depending on what we need. This, however, doesn't work because many of these pre-made variables have limits. So instead of storing it where the number gets bigger, why not store it where the number gets slightly bigger? What I mean are decimals. As long as we don't store too much for scratch rounds, decimals won't break the limit. This is the perfect solution! So now we just need a code. I created a way to read data from tempo and day two ended. So let's jump into day three. The next challenge is the most formidable of all, math. Oh boy. So our current challenge is placing data into tempo at a certain position. This is relatively easy. We use a loop to go through every single digit, then we add a digit to a new variable. If the digit is one we want to change, then we change it. The best way to do this is to use the join block, but I couldn't get it working in Tosh at all. I think it had something to do with the fact that Tosh only likes it when you use text in join blocks. This means that we'll have to use math. First, we'll set up two digits, which will never be changed. Then, we'll use the loop method to go through every single digit. Next, for each digit, we'll multiply it by 10 to a negative power, which will make it into a decimal at a certain position. Finally, we'll then just have to add it to the new variable and repeat. Here's the final code. It took me pretty much all of day three to do this, one reason being that I couldn't figure out how to use the 10 to the power of block. But man, I was so happy when I was able to make that player move. Oh, it's moving to the right. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, let's go. Now, here's the good news. We've encountered most of the problems when it comes to not using a mouse, meaning that we can focus on building the game. On days four and five, I worked on adding opponents, moving the player, and fixing a lot of bugs, as well as adding scoring and downs. On day six, I focused on making the score visible. Now, before I continue, I have to apologize. I've spent a lot of time focusing about the scratch part of this challenge, but not the keyboard part. In other words, here's a quick 30 second tutorial on keyboard shortcuts that I am using. To navigate, I'm using the arrow keys. I can press control and then the arrow keys to navigate between words. If I press shift instead, I can select text to copy and paste, for example. I can also combine both modifiers. To go between tabs, I'm using control and tab and control shift tab. And to go between links, I'm using tab and shift tab. And that's pretty much it. So let's go back to the challenge. Uh oh, it looks like the score is flickering. Is there another bug going on here? Um, oh no. So remember when I said that using decimals to store information was the perfect solution? Yeah, absolutely not. If you open up a calculator, you can see that 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.3. But if you go into Scratch or Tosh and build up this script, you'll get false. Well, if we pull up the 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, you can see that Scratch says it's 0 0.3 and then some. This is because of round off errors, which is due to how your computer handles decimals. I'll probably cover this in more detail in a future short, but basically your computer stores numbers in binary, and the only way to store decimals in binary is to round them, giving us the round off error. Usually, you won't have to worry about round off errors in a Scratch project, but when you're storing information inside of a decimal, it makes all the difference. So then, we need to either find a new way to store information, or we need to store less information where round off errors won't affect their values unless the game is played for a long period of time. So I decided to try the first method and find a new way to store information. You see, each scratch file is actually a hidden zip file. This zip file consists of the costumes, the sounds, as well as a project.json file, which contains the code and the project data. Now, in theory, this file can be manipulated to add a variable, so we can use that variable instead of tempo. However, as I tried for a couple days to figure this out, I just could not add the variable. I was pretty inexperienced with how project.json file actually works. 
any information from the web was about Scratch Free. So whenever I gave it a try, I just kept on getting errors. Honestly, what I realized was that in order to shrink the data stored in Tempo down, and also to get this whole project finished, I needed to simplify. So on day 9, or day 8, I don't know, I sat down and got to work. I was able to remove downs and one of the defending opponents, which saved me three store digits in tempo. I just had to set up a simple scoring system, a simple opponent algorithm, and a simple timer. And then I could simply press Ctrl S and finish the entire project. Not only had we finished the project, but we also finished the challenge of making a scratch game without a mouse. The and wait, 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 you might be thinking, there's one small problem. If you go way back to the beginning of this video, you told us that you would import and share the project on Scratch. Can you do that without a mouse? And here, my friends, is the hardest part of this challenge. Why do I feel like I've been saying that throughout this video? Once I was in the Scratch project editor, I first tried tab. Surprisingly, pressing tab allows us to press a few buttons, but not the file and load from your computer button. Control O doesn't work either. I spent a few more days trying out other methods, but none of these methods worked. Eventually, I realized that I had spent too long recording this video, and that I needed to accept defeat. Unfortunately, I was not able to import the Scratch project. However, there's still good news. The project, with a few minor glitches, works well on Tosh. However, when I imported the Scratch, which I had to go through Scratch 2 and then Scratch 3, the project doesn't work. It just breaks. And since the challenge was to make a Scratch game without a keyboard, yeah, I don't know if I completed the challenge. So I'll let you decide. However, I am very much willing to give this challenge another try, where it works in both Tosh and Scratch. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that happen. Thank you guys for watching. I 100% recommend that you check out Tosh. It's an amazing program. If you have any thoughts, please let me know down in the comments. Have a great day. God bless.